Hey guys, it's Paradise, and today we have some Hammer gameplay from a Japanese channel that kind of translates to Bullfango, which I love as a channel name. And in this, we get a bunch of sort of impressions and a showcase of the Hammer's gameplay with a bunch of different changes and iterations to it. There are some big changes to it, from the sort of reach of its attacks, to various super or hyper armor that you have during different moves, and various offset attacks that are built in. So this is pretty cool, and we're going to go through the impressions that were there for the hammer, and then there's going to be a Chattacabra and a Doshigama sort of gameplay showcase at the end as well. So the first thing that he's going to basically go over here is his initial impressions of playing it, and one of the first things that he noted is the distance that you need to be to the monster feels like you need to be closer. So it feels like the actual range of the hammer has been shortened. And I think to compensate for this, as we'll, get, as we'll see as we go through, is you have a lot more mobility while doing moves. You can use the analog stick to kind of do little sidesteps or movements during your swings. That doesn't make it as punishing when you sort of misposition or the monster moves. And what that actually means is that you are a bit more mobile and you can be a bit more aggressive even though you have to be even closer to the monster and to be honest as a hammer player you should be right in the monster's face anyway and that's further backed up with extra things like your offset attack built into your golf swing which we will get into soon as well but you can see here it's very easy to miss when you're literally right next to or in front of the monster you have to be right in their face and this is further emphasized with the focus strike that we'll get into soon as well but one thing that's really interesting is that he's saying that the stamina of the charge basically didn't feel as punishing as it did in previous games. So you can really hold down that charge for even longer. And he's noting that the charge level 2 was much more easy to connect with the monster, while 3 was a much shorter range. But 3 is what you wanted to be doing when you had the opportunity there, as, as it's a more damaging and stronger attack. And you can see here as well, after doing a big bang attack, this is really cool. You can actually do an additional triangle circle input and you go straight into a sort of spin. So you can see here the new spin, which is really, really cool. So there's these different ways to combo into the new spin or even just into the spinning bludgeon that you're used to. So you have these different combo paths that lead into spinning bludgeon, both from your charge and from your golf swing. So there's a lot that you can do with that, which is actually pretty cool to hear and just gives you that more flexibility as a hammer hunter. You can see the, it's a super meaty looking weapon in Worlds as well. Like the damage just looks really good on it, which I'm actually really pleased for. And another thing that's pointed out here is that you have this sort of hyper armor on certain attacks, meaning you can just keep up the offensive. And it isn't clear exactly what moves gives you hyper armor. We know that big bang attack means you can't be flinched while doing it. We don't know if certain attacks will still knock you out of it. But that's the one move that I know has some form of hyper armor in it is the big bang. But it seems like from the impressions that other moves also have this hyper armor sort of mixed in there as well. So for the focus strikes, the biggest thing that was noted is how hard it was to actually land. It seemed like you had to be right on the wound point as you had to really connect directly to it. So you're probably not going to be able to hit super high ones or far away ones on a monster even when you're stood next to it. Like the range is super small. So it was noted that you kind of had to wait for different opportunities to arise before you could get that focus strike down. And you can see here, when you do the focus strike, you go into a spinning attack and then into a big bonk at the end. And it's there's a bit of a debate with the wounds, whether you want to keep them and take the bonus damage for hitting the wound spot or pop them immediately for the, uh, the multiplier that you have. And there is this hidden damage multiplier if you pop multiple wounds at once, which it doesn't look like it's going to be super easy to do on the hammer given that it is a very sort of short-ranged hit, unless maybe you can really spin around the monster while doing that couple spins before the finishing hit that will detonate the actual wounds. But you can see here the spinning bludgeon. This is where you can combo into it after doing a level 3 charge. And there's actually a really interesting thing called a mighty charge and mighty charge slam. So when you charge to level 3, you can press triangle circle to do a mighty charge. And while doing the mighty charge, you can actually hold R2 to charge again and then release it at maximum charge to do the mighty charge slam which is like an extra finisher if you will so there's some cool stuff you can do with juggling your charges and the chart the way that it charges has changed from world iceborne and rise according to the impressions of this japanese player but again something that is a reoccurring theme throughout this impressions is that it was quite easy to miss a lot of things due to the range but then that was counteracted with the additional sidesteps and movements that you can do 
while actually doing these different moves. So you can see here the golf swing combo. And you can see there's both vertical steps, forwards and backwards steps. So as well as side to side. So you have these different movement options, even if you miss the initial or the middle hit of the combo. And you can really see this in action here against this uh, Doshiguma and various other gameplay clips. You have that little bit of movement, which is going to be really important if the range is reduced. And it's going to be interesting to see how people feel about that, because the hammer traditionally positioning was super, super important, especially if you're doing something like uh, the Big Bang. But again, as you can see here, both the new spinning move there, as well as the Big Bang, have a form of hyper armor in it. So you, you're a bit more resilient when you're doing these high committal, big damaging moves. And you really always want to get the last hit of the Big Bang off, as that's where your biggest chunk of damage is coming from, from that high commitment combo. You can see here next, he's talking about the uppercut or the golf swing combo having a built-in offset attack on it, which is really cool. And I actually timed this from some different gameplay, and it's around two to two and a half seconds to execute the golf swing combo now, which means you can kind of do that in a lot of scenarios. If you have a two second buffer between an attack hitting you, you can time your golf swing and get some meaty damage off with your offset attack, but you do take chip damage too. So when a monster's about to attack, if you have two seconds, just go into a golf swing combo and hit the offset attack, which is now baked into the final step, which is also just really cool. I love the offset attacks on all the weapons. It feels really good on Switch Axe as well. And here we have some Chatacabra gameplay where we can see a lot of the hammer here in action. And this Japanese player is actually pretty good with the hammer, I will say. He's doing a lot of charged attacks, which is where you kind of want to be hitting the KOs here as you can see as well, going straight into a Big Bang, which again, as we've talked about, has a bit of a super or hyper armor in it. You see the wounds are starting to appear as well, so we might get some focus strikes soon too. But overall, it seems like you have extra mobility, but you have to be closer to the monster, and you have more options to combo into things, like comboing into the Spinning Bludgeon or going into the Mighty Charge and Mighty Charge Slam. And of course, you have built in hyper armor and offset attacks into certain moves of your combos. So it's a big change to a lot of the sort of core way that the hammer actually plays and feels rather than adding in tons and tons of flashy new moves or some crazy new, I don't know, like like the Helmbreaker Ender that the uh, Longsword got, which is just like visually insane and does a lot of damage instead, kind of like with the, uh, the Great Sword and maybe even the Sword and Shield the core gameplay of the weapon has been dramatically changed in a lot of ways. It's still going to feel familiar, but you're going to be more mobile. You've got that hyper armor and all these other things built in and, and the extra ways to combo into a spinning bludgeon after doing something like a charge level three or your golf swing going into a spinning bludgeon afterwards is pretty cool. And I'm really liking the look of the uh, the hammer against the Dishagama. It looks so meaty. Like every big hit is like flinching it. Like look at it was like two flinches in a row into a KO here. So the hammer is definitely going to be one of those like visceral feeling weapons when you are good with it and particularly obviously hitting the head, which is again where you want to be. And remember, you can always golf swing and knock up other players if they're on their head where they shouldn't be. So it's really cool to see a bunch of the hammer in action to get a sort of impressions or breakdown over some of the different moves and how it feels to play. So we hope you guys enjoyed a little look at the hammer here, the sort of impressions, some gameplay and how a few moves flow into each other. The original video will link down below. Of course, it's all in Japanese, but if you want to check it out, definitely go and check it out. It's always good to show support over to the Japanese Monster Hunter community, as of course they do great content too. It just all needs translating. And they're also very good players over there as well. We hope you enjoyed. Make sure you drop a like down below if you did and subscribe for more videos on Monster Hunter and your favorite games coming very, very soon.